Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
tell us work. So that, <laughs> that committee, so Nick, that committee works. Um, it, it, it it's meeting has a special a specific date. It's a Monday night, and they meet. And really, that position is more of a liaison. It's really to give them updates on the building, our building project, and get information from them. Sometimes it doesn't require that you stay the entire time. Um, and right now, um, they're just really getting to the beats of their of their projects. So. so. Yeah. All right. I entertain a motion to approve Nick Schleicher to the permanent building committee. So is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then there was only one request. We currently have um, the um, warrant signed by Sherry first and Dan. Just because of the summer months, too, is it possible to add a third person? It just gives flexibility when people are away. I can, I can actually. If it's a third person, if nobody wants it, I, and I don't want it, by the way, um, let me be very clear about that. But but if nobody wants it, I can probably do it more simple. So okay, perfect. In the past, I haven't been able to do it. Right. But probably can. Thank you. Does anybody else want it? I can't imagine anybody. <laughs> All right, entertain approach, uh, motion to approve Mr. Savas as the third sig signer of the warrants. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Hi. So the next order of business is the recognition of the Norton Middle School Scholar Leaders, Mr. Dr. Beckham and Mr. Aitman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee to the public as well. Um, this is some of the fun times that I have as superintendent, you know. So um, I'd like to recognize at this time at Norton Middle School's uh, scholar leader, Benson Chang. Benson, come on up. So the write-up goes each year, two grade eight students from each middle school across the state are selected as scholar leaders. The scholar leader program is designed to recognize and further promote the next generation of successful leaders. Congratulations on your selection as a scholar leader at Norton Middle School. Pleasure, thank you. And Quick, quick photo. Congratulations. Congratulations to the family as well. Thank you. I'd also like to recognize, um, and also a member of my superintendent's advisory representing uh, the eighth grade, is Taylor Collins. Taylor is the second um, nominee here, uh, or recipient of the grade eight students uh, from across the Commonwealth as a scholar leader designed to recognize and further promote the next generation of successful leaders. And I can tell you she is a leader because I know she's very involved um, uh, and a really good athlete too. Congratulations, so my pleasure. Congratulations to the family as well. And um, I'd like to add three more for tonight. Um, I'd like to, um, well, let me do this last one. Um, so we would like to recognize formally tonight, Benson Chang for 2022 Project 351 Student Ambassador. Come on up. Can you take two seconds to talk about how the project went? Yes, of course. Um, so we donated a total of 62 bags um, to Cradles to Crans and Goodwill. Um, Mr. Goldstein and I dropped that off at Gillette maybe a couple months ago. Um, but Carolyn Casey is our co-founder at Project 351, and she wants to thank you all um, for the continuous support um, and promotion of our um, youth-led movement. Um, and we did, we had a very successful year more than um, normal, and we just wanted to thank you all. Awesome. He's only in eighth grade, by the way. <laughs> we would like to recognize our salutatorian and valedictorian tonight as well. So I'm going to bring up the salutatorian, Courtney Cass. Let me read a little bit about Courtney. Courtney has been a very active student at Norton High School. She was a member of many honor societies, including president of the National Honor Society. She volunteered her time as a student leader in the Principal's Advisory Committee and was a student representative on the COVID Reopening Committee. Courtney has been active in many clubs, such as Debate, Best Buddies, and Global Citizens. Courtney has won several awards for her artwork, including a Scholastic Art Award 
honorable mention. She plans to pursue a career melding her two passions of art and history. I do love one of them, history for the record. <laughs> she plans on attending Providence College. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And to the family as well. Okay, here it is. Valedictorian, Abigail Leah. Abigail was a member of many honor societies as well, in which she held several leadership positions. She was an active in many clubs, including DECA and Global Citizenship. She was captain of the NHS volleyball team. Abigail demonstrated leadership and commitment to community service by participating in a Teen Advocacy Day with Senator Markey and former U.S. Representative Joe Kennedy and playing piano for several, several benefit events. Abigail is passionate about molecular biology <laughs> and has taken advantage of many opportunities to visit industry sites. She plans to pursue a career in medical research after attending Washington and Lee University. Congratulations. <laughs> And I will see you guys at class night yes. and graduation. It's gonna be there for both. Okay. Yes, yeah. I know you are. Peter. So congratulations to everyone that's been recognized tonight. Thank you all very much for being great students, and thank you to the family as well, and to my staff who supports us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They know they're speeches, right? Yeah. Speech. Yes. Speech. Plenty of speeches. <laughs> Don't get now, food. You guys are really lucky, though. Um, the chair, the former chairman is not giving the speech that they're long. <laughs> they're passionate. They are passionate, but they're long. They're comedic with a dramatic twist. <laughs> okay. I'm like, I'm like the M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> wow. Yeah, she's writing them. Yeah. Right, she is. Uh, speak. She's here. Um, all right, congratulations, everyone. Um, I've said this publicly, I don't even know how many times. Celebrating our students is the best part of what we do. Benson's been here a couple of times now. I've known Taylor since she was that big. Um, and to you two, congratulations. It's wonderful the opportunities you have before you. And we thank you for giving back to Norton and wish you the best. Next order is to approve the meeting minutes of the May 12th open session meeting and executive session meetings. Everybody had a chance to. I would say to just, you absolutely can leave if you want. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole show. Thank, thank, you, all. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Uh, as mentioned, Oh. Okay, motion to approve the minutes from the May 12th open meeting and executive session meeting. Does everybody have a chance to review those? Yes. Any comments, questions, concerns? Okay. Entertain uh, motion to approve the minutes as written. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next order of business is the school warrants. <clears throat> I have reviewed and approved the following school expense and payroll warrants. School expense warrants for May 19th, $1,020,744.85. School payroll warrants for May 7th, $1,038,888.48. May 19th, $1,056,281.39. Uh, next order of business is the student representative update is Malia present. She is here. Yes, I am. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, yes. Can. Take it okay. away. Let me throw my camera on. So I'm actually outside the middle school right now because I just watched uh, the Norton tennis team win. They're back there. Um, <laughs> they did awesome. Um, okay, so it's just going to be me uh, today, but I'll start with the uh, LGN. So Mrs. Luke said that they have field day coming up. Uh, there's a field trip to Oak Knoll Nature Center um, and a field day for uh, all of the other grades because kindergarten is separate. Uh, the annual Memorial Day concert is tomorrow. 
Um, and they're having spirit days throughout the week. Uh, let me see. At the JCS, they're celebrating Memorial Day with a concert. Uh, just like the LGN, they are welcoming six local veterans and uh, multiple veterans of JCS families to the outdoor concert. Uh, the Sea Turtle Day that we told you guys about was a huge success, um, and everybody had a ton of fun learning about sea turtles and their school mascot. Uh, Mr. Gagan said that for Memorial Day on Friday, they are doing readings by fifth grade students on the announcements and throughout the day about the importance and significance of Memorial Day. Um, they also also have anti-bullying presentations happening or happened today and tomorrow uh, for their fifth grade students and they also have a field day planned with their spring concert coming up for the first time in three years after COVID. Uh, for Mr. Hayward the middle school, um, he said that they're holding their annual Memorial Day assembly tomorrow. Uh, on Wednesday they had a day of awesomeness field day that uh, featured obstacle courses and ice cream truck and was sponsored by the NMS parent board. Um, and then their uh, field trip for the uh, fifth grade transition to NMS will take place on June 8th, which is when the yellow kids come over and see what it's going to be like to be in middle school. And I remember that it was really cute. Um, and then on June 17th, the eighth grade dinner dance will be held again at uh, Norton Middle School. So then for the high school, uh, Mr. DeJoy, the music teacher, wanted me to mention that they just participated in the Great East Chorus and Band competition and both of them did amazing. Uh, Mr. Dolman told me to talk about the Memorial Day Assembly, which is tomorrow, and I'm emceeing it, so hopefully it'll be good. Um, we're having veterans coming in. We did like a mural outside, and then we're going to have, um, you know, performances and stuff and readings from kids who did essays for it. Um, yeah, and we have for my junior class, we have the We Are Seniors Week coming up on the week of June 6th. We're all going to dress up together and like do the themed days and stuff. And soon we have the history field trip around Norton to teach kids uh, in the younger grades about like a tour of Norton and the history of their town. So I think that is it. Um, like I said, the tennis team just won, the sports are doing great. So I think that's it for me. And I think some of you guys will be hearing from uh, the new student representative who wants to introduce himself over email because he couldn't make it today. But Antonio will be doing that soon. So I think that's all for me, if that's good with you guys. Sounds good. Thanks, Malia. Thanks, Malia. Thank you. I want to be mine from my backyard. <laughs> Live from my backyard during a school committee. <laughs> I'm seeing something doesn't tell me. <laughs> I have the same. I have the same type of home too. Complete surprise. Yeah. Yep. Oh, also, my my eighth grade didn't tell me she was chosen to do all my. She probably told you like a year after it actually happened. But <laughs> just told me that she had to go shopping. That's uh, nice. There it is. There it is. There it is. And as you can tell, Malia, that was a nice interview if she wants to be a sports I mean, a yeah, new sports really did a nice job. With the whole yeah. shaky camera. Yeah. Take it to me right here, right? It's it's like it's like right right this. You got it. Yeah, did we have to do the uh, executive session? We just, we did the both. We just, yeah. Oh, we did both? Yeah. Right. Nope, missed that. My fault. All right. Uh, the next item is proposed amendments on regulation on MCAS competency determination. Well, I know that Morton School Committee loves nothing more than to talk about NCAS, so I'm happy to be here tonight. Um, I wanted to share just a couple slides with you so that um, our audience here and at home really understand what these changes are. Um, so ultimately, the changes that Desi is proposing would actually establish a new competency determination for students that are currently in the classes of 2026 through 2029. Um, and I know those years seem like very, very far down the road, but um, that's actually starting beginning with our current eighth graders. Um, so these um, proposed changes were presented to the board on April 26th. They are actually open for public comment through June 3rd, so that's why we're here tonight. Um, and then they expect final action to be taken by the Board of Education by the end of June. Can I ask, why is it only three years? Um, so ultimately, I think what they're looking for is that um, right now, we only have ELA, math, and science, technology. They are anticipating that at some point they're going to be adding a history of social studies exam. However, we've also been talking about that for roughly 20 years. So I think they're trying to um, get the next few years out of the gate and then kind of see how it goes. All right. So if, if they don't, if they don't um, propose extending it, it'll sunset. <laughs> I don't think so. I think ultimately, <laughs> ultimately they'll probably update it as, as we get a little bit closer. Okay. I mean, but, but that's what their, their intention was to only do the three years. Yes. Okay. For now. It was, 
<laughs> was this the same um, news report that made this a graduation requirement? Um, it is a graduation requirement, yes. So um, just um, I just want to kind of go over the major components. So um, as many of us remember, a few years ago, we transitioned from the legacy MCAS to the next generation assessment. Um, and so at that time, the entire scoring system changed and students needed to get it to 40 in math and ELA in order to reach that graduation in the competency determination and then a, a 220 on science. So um, I've actually seen several news articles that have been talking about the, um, how DESE is according to, proposing to increase the standard. This amendment is actually not increasing the standard. It's just aligning the standard with our current scoring system. So um, I can't make any predictions on what DESE may do in the future. However, um, at this time, they're not actually looking to, um, you know, increase the scoring um, component for students. So um, the new uh, criteria is a 486 for math and ELA, and then science is a 470. So you can kind of see where those numbers fall um, on the scoring rubric. Um, so ultimately, students for science just need to meet that partially meeting expectations, and then it's right in the middle for ELA and math. The other major change is the EPPs. So students that do not reach that threshold of 486 for math and ELA um, need to get at least a score of 470, but they also have to complete an educational proficiency plan. Some of the changes that um, DESE is proposing in these amendments um, is a new requirement around an, up, an updated EPP every single year while a student is enrolled at Norton High School. Um, we also must offer tutoring or other individualized academic supports, um, and that we need to include local diagnostic or summative assessments to show that students are making progress towards these goals over time. Um, these are all new requirements that come with the, um, the changes in the regulations. Can I just add something? Sorry. Yes, please. Just for the sake of argument. I just want you to know what this really means, right? So this is a student is a sophomore or science is a freshman doesn't reach that, that score, we're creating an entire file for this student, potentially courses. This is adding staff. This well, is an unfunded to mandate. Ask. So when they brought up this sort of um, expectation, who covers the, the financial cost of it? <laughs> and how does it actually logistically yeah. play out? It's an unfunded, unfunded mandate. Um, so I actually, Vinny and I met so earlier. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Isn't that crazy? Say the same well, thing. That's typically it comes from the legislature. This is coming from DESIS right. yeah. via the board. And I think that's what the school committees have to recognize is that this is, we're going to have potentially students on plans for a, for a minimum of, let's say, two years, junior and senior year. You know, and, and I get the idea that we want to show that students are improving. But the fact is that this is a paper trail nightmare. Nightmare. Mm -hmm. And what and what authority does Desi have to require us to hire? People? Full authority. No, right. to hire, no. Right. But to but do that's it, what this yes. Is, right. So it's a de facto hiring. They're they're forcing us to hire. People. Yes. So how is no Desi? Funding. Right. <laughs> how is Desi made up? Like what? Like is it is it educators? Is it? It's representative bodies uh, that come from private business. There's a student representative at on the board, and then appointments by the governor. Are there any educators on there? There are one or two, one representing the Teachers Association, um, and I think one other person is a school committee member who was also an educator at one point. I can get you the specifics. If they're, they're listed on there. Yeah, right. so, well, I'm just, just curious if they, if they truly have the student body of Massachusetts in their best interest, because it sounds like they don't, Correct. in my opinion. Also. So Vinny and I met earlier this week with the uh, administration at Norton High School, and we kind of, you know, went through the whole document with a fine tooth comb and, and really came up with some feedback that we have as educators um, that we will be putting together for um, the department and, you know, before that January 3rd deadline. So um, this is way too much. Thank you. Don't wait January 3rd. Oh. Oh. Yeah. They don't get nothing. You know what I mean. Can we, go, uh, can we go back a slide, too? Sure. Where, where are one? we currently falling? No, sorry, one more. Okay. Where are we currently falling on this scale? From so this is an standpoint? individual student scale. So when students take the MCAS exam, Correct. the parent report that goes out, every single student has 
something that looks sort of like this for both math and ELA, and then the grades where they take science. Um, so depending on the grade level and the assessment, you know, we have a, we have a large majority of our students that are in the blue and green sections in terms of- We have an average number. Off the top of my head, no. um, I would say that at the high school level, our grade 10 students, which is, this is really relevant to, um, I would say probably 65% of our students are in the blue and green. Um, it really depends on the school year. We sat down and went through our current junior class, mm -hmm. um, and the majority of our students that aren't on target to meet that, it really came down to a math assessment. So they, they passed the ELA, they passed science, but they were struggling with math. So what's, I guess back to that point then is, what are we looking like in terms of how many students percentage-wise could fall below that, and then we're putting them on plans and staff these EPG plans? I would say a good. And again, I, we don't need. I mean, taking, I mean, taking. To, yeah, probably. I'd say about fifteen percent. I'd say of our probably, current juniors. Probably yeah. no higher than fifteen percent, and you're going to see um, more math than yes. ELA always. So our ELA scores for students at uh, at that higher end is like ninety plus. Yes. It's usually 93, 94, 95, and then our math is eighty eight, eighty nine, ninety. We've had some some years at ninety one mm -hmm. um, as a whole. So now sure. you know. So it's not, it, it's, it's the, the problem is that if, if, if we all remember high school, this is all about building the transcript, right? So that you can decide to go to the workplace or to go to, go to college. And this is just going to take other, you can only do so much in a day. You can only do certain classes in a day, you know, so you're not going to be, and there are kids who don't test well and are taking calculus. And now they potentially might not be taking calculus. Yeah. And we Think were having that. those conversations yeah. the other day and we were looking at our student with our, at our student yeah, this, rosters. But this is why this is a little bit of BS, right? So, and, and Nick, to, to your question, if you look at the scores, and it's not Norton, it's, it's holistically across Massachusetts or whatever, the scores from, I think they started in the third grade, yeah. third grade, the scores are much more, um, much more dispersed across the line. There's, you know, there's a, a, enough kids in the partially and, and not meeting to be, you know, what you would consider like, oh, that's a real concern. And it continues and continues and continues and continues right to the 10th grade when it's a requirement. And then all of a sudden, 88, 90, everybody's great all of a sudden. So in, in my opinion, I've said this before that I'm not, I'm not breaking any new ground. The test is, is, is bogus. It, it's, they're, not, they're not really measuring to like make, make sure that everybody's educated. They make these tests, normal tests, until it really matters. And then they I don't want to say they make it easy because it's it's not obviously like easy for everybody, but but they they kind of dumb it down a little bit so that okay, well now everybody's passing all of a sudden. And you can't tell me like from whatever the eighth grade to tenth grade, everybody all of a sudden buckled down and started studying. So the idea that they're telling us, oh, you have to do all this, 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 and this to get to this place where you can get people in the in the meets proficiency, et cetera. <clears throat> we all know they're gonna get there anyways, right? Because that's how the test is set up. So they're gonna they're gonna cause us to hire a bunch of people to put all these little these unfunded mandates into place so that we can make sure that these guys are blah 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 and it's not nothing. And in the end, they're gonna get there anyways, and they would have got there if we did nothing. And and you're checking a box to say that that junior got tutoring in math. Right. You're checking a box that they took a certain class. And that to me is tracking. Yeah. That's what we're not supposed to be doing. That, that was to allow for students that yeah. could hinder students moving forward. So you've taken the test and you've passed the test and you passed it with a low score. That's basically what we're talking about. It happens to everybody. And the fact is it hasn't stopped us from hiring people or, or graduating. I, I, I just think that this is, it, it's, 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 they just aren't recognizing what's happening here. And again, the impact on be telling a high school junior that you need tutoring or a high school junior that you can't take a certain elective because I have to force you into this elective which is now a selective. So you're taking your regular math class, but you want to take journalism because you like you like writing, but you struggle more in math. And now I got to put you in a remedial math course for a semester. Doesn't make any sense to me. And kids know it. And psychologically, it does not support the social emotional concept of mental health for kids. Hey, I got to go into that class. That's that's not how kids think. They don't want to be told something like that when they're in high school. I mean, if they fail a class and they have to retake it, that's one thing. But the idea that I took this high stakes test, I did pass it, but it's not with a high enough score. Now I have to do this as well. Doesn't make any sense to me. So Jen, when is this, um, what is sort of the logistics of this? What, 
they're suggesting this for the current so this is our current eighth graders. Current eighth graders. Yep. So students that come up as many students take the science assessment in their freshman year based mm -hmm. on whatever that they're doing, biology or physics, um, and then some take it as sophomores. So that first, once a student gets below that 470 on science, we kind of kick into gear in terms of what our responsibility is to the student. Mm -hmm. So, um, so really, it is going to begin with our with our current eighth grade class. So, as I mentioned, we went through the plan and kind of came back with some, you know, feedback that we have, um, which is basically what we're discussing here. I apologize for all the words on the slide. You know, currently as a district, we offer math strategies, we offer study skills classes, we offer. Um, smaller class sizes for students that are struggling in math. However, if we're really going to be looking at targeted interventions that for students, this is this is a number one staffing issue um, and a, you know, a time issue, um, and there is no funding for those types of things. Um, Desi used to offer um, a summer MCAS academy that we ran for a number of years, um, and it was very successful. Um, that grant has not been around, I'd say, probably for about the last eight years. Um, so it's definitely a funding issue. Um, they also talk about that DESE can approve assessments. There's no information on what those assessments may be. Um, so it's really difficult for us to say, are we doing, do we have anything that would qualify um, in, our, in our current, you know, bag of tools? Um, so, you know, again, if we had to adopt a new diagnostic assessment for our high school students, again, that would be another funding challenge. Um, and something that doesn't look like it comes with any funding. So two quick things here. Number one, think about the elimination of fine arts. That's what's going to happen to school districts. I, I guarantee you that's not actually going to be my recommendation because you guys all know how I feel about that. We'd be trying to build it, not eliminate it from the original concept. Here's the second thing. I, I'm, I'm a little, you know, this is something for the, 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 big, fella, the big guys, if you will. Further information on assessments approved by DESE. So and they give you the the right the, the the regulation. I'm not sure that I'm not sure that besides there's been legislation about MCAS, but I've never seen legislation about the DESI has a requirement. They're saying that they do, uh, that they have the ability to to tell us what tests can be approved. Well, DESI is also at the same time trying to tell us what curriculum is approved and is supporting that with grant funding for districts that are using said curriculum. So I think they're so they're doing that overreach. You're seeing more and more state control of things that we've never seen here. Um, by people who are not elected. By not only not elected, <laughs> but but really don't recognize, like like most of these rules and regulations is because there are communities, I'm not gonna say who, but there are communities that do need to spend more time on curriculum and assessment and teaching practice and that. You know, we do pretty well, especially to Deneza's point, as kids are leaving us and graduating and, and entering the workforce or or uh, college, and I don't think it's been because of one test. No. I know you love when we talk about it. <laughs> um, we also talked about, you know, the expectation of MCAS. Why are we not allowing students to demonstrate their master of learning in other ways? Um, you know, giving us the opportunity to look at local assessments um, and the way that we're supporting students through state standards here. Um, and then also, what does this plan look like? There is no consistency across the state when it comes to these proficiency plans and that we believe that um, DESI has the obligation to support districts in creating these plans and, and developing um, a best practice to what, what we can do um, within our building and, and really creating more of a resource library for our high school. So those were just some of the recommendations and the feedback that we had came up with from our perspectives. Um, so I will be putting together a letter from um, our department and welcome you all to do yes, this. Jen, I I'd think to. Um, if you could include something about that sort of SEL piece, I yeah. think we've worked for however many years um, to really promote that. I think one, um, testing isn't really supportive of SEL. And I think um, to your point, Joe, if we are going to need to offer support to students, I'm not sure that the way that potentially it's being proposed is really supportive to emotional wellness. So if you could include that, that would be great. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I think my couple of big points on this is, you know, we have this big discussion around midterms about alternate assessments, and we hope that our, our you know, our staff likes that 
portion. And I think the other part of this is a question, the EPP, is this like, is this going to be like legally binding, like an IEP, or is this just a suggestion, like, well, what happens? There's so many holes in this, I, I don't know where to start, but right. there's the ones that come. So Dan, that's a great question. So typically the way that this goes is it goes down the road of an audit of the district. They will know and check to see how many of our students should be on an EPP, and then if we're not doing it correctly, so and so forth, then we'll see the raft of an audit that says we're not doing it, and then potentially everything from the rules established. And I, I don't, I will tell you this because you know my history. I walked into a level three district, my first superintendent's job, not this district, a different district, and I was under these types of guidelines. And I can tell you, auditors and visits and reports is all all we did for a year and a half, eighteen months. And we don't need that, uh, any of us. And so you're absolutely right. What does this really mean? There is no college that is going to be looking for anything except, did you graduate? They don't, they, they're not asking what's your MCAS course. And there are students who do very well who get that tuition break from the state colleges and universities and all of that. But besides that, um, you're absolutely right. We have no idea what this really means. Well, I mean, I, I think too, I mean, if you're a student who in school is not your thing, but you, you get by on the skin of your teeth, you know you're going in the workforce. You know you're going to fight for the country if you sign up for armed forces. Right. And you know, to the other point, there's scholarships for these. But I would think I would love to see the number of students that are actually using that advantage because they passed this test. I mean, you know, if I'm going to hire a, a kid to work at you know my company, I could care less what his MCAS score was in high school. He's coming right out of the work high school into the workforce. It's not something. It's, it's not tangible. It, it, the only one that seems to care is Desi, because most districts, I don't think, really put a lot of stock in that. Yes. And then I think to your point, and to Carolyn's too, that the, the students that are, you know, getting by on the MCAS are not the kids that then need another class yeah. on the area. Why are we not? Especially if we're, you're taking away yes. the opportunity for them to take courses that are in their interest, take courses to prepare them for careers, Get those extra courses that you know college may look look at and say, all right, you know you have a pretty diverse background here. We're going to take a shot on you. And again, they're never even looking at the MCAS. So that to me is where they're hurting those those kids that they're yeah. reporting to help. Great. And and I could go on about this topic, but if you truly want to audit somebody, don't audit kids. Mm -hmm. Audit audit me my courses at the high school to be rigorous enough to the state. So my my algebra two class is a rigorous class. My ELA three is a regular. Don't don't do it to the kids. They they've got plenty on their plate. They've taken the test. They did pass it. They didn't pass it with the score that you want. Okay, great. Why? Take maybe it's because I'm ninth and tenth grade. And again, I'm not blaming my staff. Please do not think I'm doing that at all. I'm saying don't blame children and have them do more because that's what that is. Um, I'll put something together and share it with you before. Thanks, Jen. Jen, my suggestion to you would be as you're as you're going through this, mm -hmm. um, and, and I, I know we all think of MCAS as this municipal testing thing. It's a millions and millions and millions of dollar business. This is a business. Make no mistake about it. <clears throat> to answer one of your questions, well, what about these alternative assessments? Why don't we do those? Because that's not where the money is, right? I always say, if you follow the money, you'll figure out what the answer is. So that's that's what we're looking at here. This is why whatever it was four years ago, they said, well, we should change the change the test because they had to sell another test. There had to be another multi-millions of dollars of you know whatever test given out. Like that's how this works. I mean it's and, and to and to think otherwise is just being naive. Like, this is exactly what this is about. Make no mistake about it. And it's interesting because we're having the same conversation about curriculum and Desi's overreach with that as well. So for the first time ever. First time ever. But thank you all. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. Okay, the next order of business is vote to approve a three-year contract with the custodial union for the MOA. Yes, thank you. Uh, we negotiated with the local uh, 1702 State Council 93, uh, the American Federation of State County Municipal Employees, AFL-CIO, uh, since uh, I think mean, January, February, we sent it to me, uh, Wade and myself on your behalf. This is a three-year contract, and I'll go through the big picture line items. Um, there is an increase in longevity. Um, there is a complete change um, that's, I think, really important for both sides of the grievance procedure. 
Um, there is a, a new evaluation process for custodians, which includes the principals with the director of uh, facilities or for the outside guys, the maintenance group, the principal, uh, excuse me, the director of facilities with the athletic director, because there's responsibilities there. Um, really um, thankful that they, they joined me in recognizing that evaluations are important. Um, and this is really the first uh, BP, if you will, evaluation that we've had. Um, we have changed um, to new employees and any existing employee wants to take it by a deadline to pay time off from uh, 15 sick days and three personal days or 18 to a total of 12 days only by uh, coming back six days um, per um, year. Um, and then we've also um, have the agency service fee uh, that you see there, uh, the um, proposal for the paid time off is included, including the, uh, the capping of the vacation time in 20 days uh, as well. And then the discipline and discharge procedure, uh, which now has uh, the oral review, the written warning, the suspension and the potential discharge process, which is also uh, can go to arbitration, of course, that's, that's under bind binding. And then the salary scale, which comes in at, with a 222 two, two and an adjustment in each of the years, thereby allowing us to be, uh, to be quite frankly, more competitive, but it will still put us underneath some of the area schools that we've lost custodian students in the past. Um, they have voted this unanimously, and I ask the support of the school committee as well. It was great work. <clears throat> yeah, it's one of our more Both thorough sides. ones mm -hmm. in terms of uh, aligning with the other things that we've asked from yeah. our teachers, our parents, our administrative assistants. So every union now has a very clear um, assessment rubric um, for its employees for the district. To be quite honest, with the first time in our district. It's great. On the, uh, I can probably bring it up. On the salary scale, Great. Uh, any other questions or comments on that? And a motion to approve the three year contract as written and presented. So, second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, this contract starts on the 1st of July and the three years. I appreciate the work Thank of you. the custodial uh, team as well. And my colleague uh, Wade and support from Matt in the process. There is a, a signature page there for the chairman to sign. Sorry, it's brilliant. Okay, thank you. All right, next order of business is vote to approve appointment of new school business administrator. Uh, Christine, if you'd like to come up, please, and have a seat. Um, folks, this is Christine Hatfield. Um, Christine has been a loyal employee of Norton Public Schools since February. <laughs> um, Christine has um, almost 10 years at Keith Tech as the Assistant um, Director of Finance. Um, with our colleague here, jumping ship, um, we, we did post outside, but we started to have some conversations internally, um, not only about how Christine has fit in a short time, but her relevant experience to the position. As you know, we have grown business managers here through the years. Um, some have come with more experience. Some have come with actually less experience and now are working in bigger districts um, and, and all of that. But um, I'm really um, happy that Christine has not only joined us with the work that she's done, um, but some of the things she wants to continue to do. As you know, this is a recommendation for hire from the superintendent to the school committee, and you can, um, vote it up or vote it down. Uh, Christine will have a mentor um, that the district will, will pay for. Uh, that should always be part of a first year of business manager, even superintendents have them, principals, um, and then go through uh, a completer certification, uh, which is not too far away, which I'm really happy about. And I'll turn it over to you folks. Okay, any questions? Well, uh, <laughs> far set very well, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Now, in, in all seriousness, you got, you got a high bar to meet, but uh, not, not to make you nervous about it. Um, yeah, you did a great job, honestly. Uh, you're going to be missed, but, uh, it wasn't so much a question for you as I wanted to be jabbing. But... <laughs> <laughs> Christina is also a um, taxpayer in the town of Norton and has two children at the LGN. So I'm hoping 
more than four years <laughs> when I booked people in long term uh, because of her connection to the community. And one of the reasons why she joined us from her last position um, was really to be closer to home and family. So this is this could be a very, very good long term solution for one public schools. So she's ready. Well, uh, congratulations, first of all. Um, I would say welcome to the district, but we'll just welcome you to the new office. <laughs> um, you know, as as Inez mentioned, you know, Matt's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but in, in any he's, sense, he's okay. He's great until June 30th. Right? <laughs> After yes. that, we blame everything on him. That's what years. happens. Just years of blaming. Uh, you know, th this is it's a win-win for for us, for you, for the district. So um, we welcome you with open arms. We look forward to you in the new role. And uh, congratulations again. And you know what our budget's going to look like, right? <laughs> yeah, it was exactly the same thing. <laughs> I guess um, the question, who's, who will be the mentor? Do we have that established yet? Yeah, so we, we will go out. Um, what we typically do is we find either an active mentor who has a contract that allows for them to work with one, or we go with a, a recently retired person who's done it for 30 years and is looking to help someone who's newer. Um, you know, the, the interesting thing is, unlike... Um, other situations where we've had to hire business managers. In this particular situation, somebody's actually been in that office consistently. Um, and it's just now a matter of putting her style into it and, and so on. Um, uh, I can also tell you that just recently, um, I, I think it might have been Nick right before you came on, um, this professional for the district, six figures, um, in her work to get into the weeds um, on uh, some things that we were doing. So I think that speaks... Um, above the caliber of the potential that we have here. That was her job in her hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can say something nice about Matt because I, really? unlike wow. you, I'm, I'm not overly, um, let's see. Number centric. Yes, exactly. Numbers. The numbers are so intense that I would go to Matt and I'd say, could you sort of dummy this down for me so I could understand what lanes and steps and all of that and the numbers and everything. So um, thank you, Matt, for always, like always teaching me. Um, and I think I'm a little bit better, right? Absolutely. With the budget now. <laughs> So, Christine, I really am excited to sort of work with you because I'm sure I'll be asking you a lot of questions, too, um, because that isn't sort of my forte. But it's been really, I think, for me, getting to sort of understand the budget a little bit has really offered me insight into how complicated it is, especially in Norton, when we don't always have enough money to sort of meet all of those needs. So I wish you a lot of luck. Um, and maybe you can continue to find money somewhere. Else. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, her, her resume actually um, reminds me a little bit of Lincoln. It does. Yep. It's the first thing it's, I thought of. Yeah. Really so, does. so this is a. He, former... and he was great. He was absolutely yeah. great until he left us. Not that so. <laughs> 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 it, was, it was the worst until Matt. Came. To Matt. To Matt's credit, he did make the font bigger on a lot of the. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think too, and, and, and Christine, I'll give it up to you to say a few words. But the other thing too is she's had experience on the town side as an assistant town uh, accountant, which will allow for those relationships to also be established um, as well. So, um, Bridgewater uh, State grant should be fine. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> so, any thoughts? I'm just very excited. Um, I'm very happy to be in this community. The moment I started here, I realized how welcoming everybody was, and just extremely nice. And um, I love everyone I work with, and I'm, I'm really excited to start my administrative role here in town. So. I do, I do think it's a really great district to work in. Actually, I mean, in all honesty, and I'm not just saying that. I, I, I think Joe's team as a whole is absolutely excellent. Um, I, I've never had an issue going to anybody and getting information out of them. Um, it's, it's been a very productive. And I guess symbiotic relationship over all these years. So I, I know you're stepping into a very, very good situation. So it requires a vote of the committee. All right. Entertain a motion to approve the appointment of the new business administrator. So is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Congratulations. 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 Aha, we got her. <laughs> <laughs> <Sucker>. <laughs> oh. um, 
Awesome, Billy. I just want to say to you, Dr. Vietta, um, <laughs> this is great work to move quickly on this because I know, yes, Matt is leaving. Yes, we like Matt. Um, we like to give him some, give him some heckling. Um, but with the way our district is right now, with our ongoing projects, with a lot of moving parts, I think this is a great, great hire for you and your team. So I want to thank you for that as well. Yeah, Christine's already started to attend meetings for the athletic complex and train. Um, and working with Matt already doing some transition transition stuff. Um, the other thing I think that's that's uh, important is um, there aren't a lot of people interested in going into this area, you know. So that just there isn't. Um, there are nights, there are long hours, there are bad budgets. You know, there are projects that come out of the way. You're, you're dealing with elected officials, appointed officials, town hall, and all of that. So I think the industry is going to go through some real headaches over the next few years. So. That's, I appreciate the kind words, but that's one of the reasons why I do it so quickly. Definitely trial and fire. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, next order is review and vote on potential changes to the school calendar. Thank you. Um, our, our wonderful town clerk, who does an awesome job, is, is requested that the school could be considering the following two changes. The first one is that, once again, um, the primary date is September, Tuesday, September 6th, which is also our first day with students. There was a request that um, we not be open um, because she's anticipating uh, numbers of people voting. We vote, and we vote at one school, uh, the middle school. Um, and the second day, which currently is also a, um, a regular work day for us, is November 8th, which is the election day. Um, if you were to move these two, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Jen, but I believe this moves the last day of school um, to the um, 16th um, without any snow days. And then the five calendar days we have to add to that would be the 20, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 26th. So if we had five snow days, we'd be on the 26th, which is pretty late. Um, I don't anticipate that, but we have to establish the calendar that way. Um, the only other thing to do would be to consider um, making a decision for the first day of school right away and holding off on what do we think it's gonna look like for November 8th. And then we can always just have it have a, a day off. We can close only one school. That's a little tricky because we have service delivery bottles that are problematic. Joe, didn't um, the election sort of at the middle school really solve some of those concerns we had because we were able to um, really sort of yeah. kind of keep everybody away from the actual Yeah, the, 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 the big one for me is actually, I, I have more concerns about the Tuesday in September than I do the Tuesday in two November. Two days off that week. It's because it, it breaks up our November pretty significantly. Um, it would cost the town limited funds if we're not here on the 6th, which is a good thing. Um, and then we could, you know, just just go with it on the, the 8th, which might actually be bigger than the primary. But I, I mean, I don't know. Some of the races around here aren't very competitive right now. So I'm just not seeing a lot. And, and we don't have a local election during those times. So um, I, I'm not a huge fan of, 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 frankly, moving either day. I mean, However, the committee vote. I mean, this is why we moved the election and did all this work and we looked at alternative sites because, like, yeah, parking's not great over that side of this school, but it's closed off, it's manageable, and that's what everybody looked for when we moved these. You know, we looked at every other alternative we could, including some that's not on school property, and now, four years later, we have to do it again, which, I mean, the first day of school to me isn't a huge issue. <laughs> I have a, I'm, I have a hard time with that week in November having two days off. And that's yeah, because we already have Friday for for about uh, Wednesday. Right. Um, personally, uh, I would say no to moving the first day of school because we we've already done that. Is there a day where we can make up a day somewhere or no? Just no. get this quickly. No, it's that's that's been the thing is that we end up can, the only way to do it. Why can't we what? do the, the 14th of April, the PD? We're doing that. Why can't we scrap that? And it still counts as a school day. Still counts as a school day. We're get a whole day. But it doesn't. It doesn't extend to that. 
Oh, wait, you're saying? That's the 14th of April That's is an early, early release day. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. So the only other option, um, and we didn't discuss it, but you see August 30th and 31st, yeah. we, we could potentially have um, welcome back day on the 30th and then um, move the staff professional development to um, the 8th, but then that's uh, November, but that still creates that breakup of the, of the week. Um, if we do the professional development and move it to the 6th, um, we still have people, you know, it's, we it use, it doesn't yeah. save what, us a day. What, what do other districts do? So there are districts that completely close, but that's because they have, uh, they utilize all of their elementary schools usually to, as precincts. Elections? Yeah, yeah. Like, for example, my hometown has eight precincts and seven buildings. <clears throat> So they have one one precinct that has um, that has two uh, precincts four and five, and then the other one through three and six, seven, and eight are all at the middle school and the elementary schools. Um, do we know if it would be better or worse to do a half day on the eighth? That I mean, that would solve us from going into that extra week. We'd still have. So I don't know if that's an option. I mean, most of the issues that happens is people trying to vote in the morning while we're coming in in the morning. What if we did a late start? We'd have to work out our contract with the, uh, with, the, with the bus company. Part of me feels like when we had this conversation in depth some years ago, that the reason why we moved out of the high school was so that we could do both voting yeah. and school yeah, the day. High school day. Day. external. This is an external. Right. Mm -hmm. So it had an external sort of voting area. It has an external entrance and exit. Um, I think that when we had done it once before, there was really good sort of security to make sure that um, any adult coming into the building was not going beyond sort of the hallway to enter into the school. I mean, we might have to just make sure that that's the way it would still be, but I feel in, it, maybe my memory is not correct, but I think that was sort of one of the specific reasons why we moved the location was because we we couldn't manage having days off um, for voting. So I'm not sure if anybody remembers those in depth yes. conversations. Yeah, no, and I know I, yes. I know that Lucia is is great, and I know she was looking at a lot of different options back then of actually moving voting outside of even yeah. our schools, and there just isn't an option. So I think that this was our sort of nice compromise. So I. I mean, maybe we just need to see how it goes. I mean, so we've always done the presidential election in November mm -hmm. um, as a PD day, or we're just closed, right? Just because we know that day is just yeah, people voting that day. Um, but um, I mean, I'm I not sure that state elections, though, that don't really have a lot of contested races, are that. I really surprised the primaries are. Right. Yeah, I feel like the primaries are so. I would like to, I mean, that would be sort of my stance is that we see how it works. Okay. I mean, I don't know if I'm, everybody agrees. I'm but pretty agnostic, honestly. I don't care, but obviously, um, you know, I mean, Carolyn is absolutely right. That, that, that was the purpose. So okay. I'll inform you. I, I don't think that the, the primary will be. Well attended, but frankly, I don't think the state election is going to be a, you know, a real part of our reader. So, and I really appreciate that we just kind of thinking ahead and really yeah. wanting to yeah. support kind of our students. So, um, if we could make sure we thank her for that, I will. Okay, so we don't, you don't have to do anything. Okay. All right, uh, the next order of business is the second reading and vote. On the non discrimination and harassment Dr. Banner. Um, so, you have the non discrimination policy, including harassment and retaliation, the sexual harassment, uh, the student non discriminatory policy, including harassment and retaliation, and the harassment of students um, as recommended um, via uh, Council for MASC, and then the changes that you made last time, and then we held off um, to take a vote. So, this would be the night that we vote on it. You do have to take, you should take them one by one. What? 
Someone just updated me. I think I might have missed this or whatever. Why, why is this all changing? But like, does something happen in our schools that we need to be worried about? No, it wasn't our schools. It, it was, um, it came out of the, the major one um, is we made a change on the AC one, the first one. It is our record. We slashed this commitment to in one through six. Yep. Um, that's the change that the committee wanted to make. In the second one, ACAB and the ACR and the, uh, the last one, those were all um, came through the Massachusetts Association of School, school um, Committees um, on based on cases and situations through the Attorney General's office. Uh, and those were the recommendations um, that were made. So for example, outlining specifically who the Title IX coordinator is with names and numbers and just not saying you have a Title IX coordinator, stuff like that. And then the student non-discrimination policy um, was specific to students because um, they're outlining that they're that everybody in the school is under the policy, but because the school is made up of students, uh, including minors, that they should have their own succinct uh, policy. There isn't huge lingo changes from the original policy that the Norton School Committee accepted back in 2021 and I think 2020 was two years ago. So these are revisions basically. So you have to have, by statute, you have to have a sexual harassment policy. By statute, you have to have a uh, non-discrimination policy. By statute, you have to have um, the uh, harassment of students policy. So that's where it comes Has from. Has our legal looked at this? Uh, our legal did not look at it. It came directly from MASC's legal who looked at it. Any other questions, comments? So you want each of these as a separate vote? Um, actually, you can just vote them. They're all under the same topic, so you can make it as one motion. All right, uh, entertain a motion to approve the non-discrimination and harassment policies as presented. So moved. For a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> all opposed? Which one of those states? So it's 301, right? Correct. All right. Um, next order is topics not reasonably anticipated. So. Just remind the school committee that class night is the 31st at um, 7 p.m. at North High School. And the graduation is on the 2nd at 6 p.m. If you could be there by 5.30. That's mm -hmm. at Xfinity when you come in. Um, you just follow away all the way to the, to the back and you can come into the, the, the backstage area. area. I also... Um, if you would indulge me for, for a second, I, um, we are hurting in education right now, grounded in the incidents that are taking place in our nation. And I am going to act only from the perspective of being your superintendent and not from the politics of this issue. Um, but once again, uh, we have elementary children who's no longer will be with us, families and community that is broken in Baldy, Texas. Um, today we were at the superintendent's uh, spring meeting and my colleague who was presenting, it was hard for him to get the words out. Um, this one is, is once again hit home. Um, and unfortunately, our nation is so divided politically on this issue, um, but we have to find a way we have to find a way around um, all of the political issues and the mental health that we know is a concern. Um, and uh, my biggest concern is that it's been a while since I've gotten so many emails, right? The next day, it was a good amount of parent emails about what is our security? What are we doing? As the committee knows, and Nick, I'll bring you up to date and meeting if you want. Um, we we have utilized uh, our Alice protocols, our Norton Police, our SROs, um, and in executive session, as you know, to to discuss uh, what we do, uh, what our crisis plan is. Uh, I just want to assure our parents that that's just something that we have a commitment to, as not only as an administration and school committee, but as I look at one of my staff members that here, 
Um, this is a big thing for us. This is a top, this is not a topic that no one public schools talks about only on, when there's an unfortunate situation. We are really trying to work hard to make sure that um, doors are locked, that we're buzzing people in. Um, you know, we're using the Raptor, which is the ID check. Um, and I know that my my staff um, is is hurting about this. We know our kids are coming in with a lot of questions. Um, we know that there are kids that are taking final exams this, this week as seniors that are struggling with that um, because of the anxiety that this brings out. Um, and then lastly, um, to the student body, you know, we want to make sure that they feel safe, but we also want to make sure that they do the right thing when they act, when they hear something. And I can tell you that that happens in Norton, um, that Norton students do come forward um, and, and really go to the adult and say, I heard this. I don't know if it's true or not, but I, I just feel like I need to say it. So I want to thank the students of Norton who continuously do that um, and, and here, because I think that speaks volumes to what parents are doing at home and what we're trying to do in the classroom. I can't imagine having my 10 year old daughter when she was 10 be involved in a situation like this. And I know all of you are parents in, 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 in the district with young children, some of us with older children. Um, but my heart breaks um, for those families. Um, you know, may we all find a way to, to resolve these issues um, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it there. I just want the community to know that we are continuously working on this topic. Um, I cannot make you any guarantees. You've heard me say this before. All I can do is work my butt off to make sure we're doing the right thing every day as much as we, I, I can control and I can offer and think outside the box. I will tell you, thanks to Wade's work through the years, um, we're going to have to spend some money going forward as well. And we're going to have to continue to do our upgrades um, every year in our budget, like we have been doing, you know, the, the as I call it, the non-sexy part of the budget, you know, the, the facilities part. Yeah. Um, so you'll be seeing some some further enhancements in that going forward. Um, and, and not because of this, we we're already working on it, um, but um, we are continuously trying to make sure that our staff is safe and our kids um, that's it. I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much. Appreciate your support. Yeah, you know, I think one thing that that is clearly evident for for this committee for our administration is the relationship we've built with the North Police Department. Well said. Is great. We have two great SROs that do a great <laughs> job. Um, as Dr. Baez said, there is never any guarantees, but we can only do our best. Um, we'll continue to do our best on behalf of our staff and students. Um, you know, when there was this climate of, you know, police shouldn't be in schools and, um, you know, to think that way, I think is, is somewhat narrow minded. It never crossed our minds to remove our SROs. I think they've become just as mar part uh, of a school culture as, you know, a, a teacher or a para or a custodial. Um, you know, those, the, our two SROs are great, and, and I'm thankful we have a presence. Uh, it would never be something I would consider to, to have them not be in our schools. Um, so, you know, it's, it's challenging times, uh, for sure. And, and all of us have children that are living through this, this time. Um, it's quite different from when, when we were children. Uh, we didn't have some of these drills that these kids have to go through now. Um, but we will continue as a committee, as an administration, as staff, uh, to keep the students as safe as we possibly can with our resources that we have. Thank you. Um, you're doing the building walkthrough, so you will not be coming back after you adjourn. Right, anything else from the committee? Okay. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn the school committee meeting not return to open. So is there a second? Okay. All is in favor? Yes. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.